So I'm here with James. Nice to meet you, James. Meet you. So whereabouts are you originally from? I'm uh, from back east, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. Yeah. And how was your childhood in Nova Scotia? Uh, it was rough, but you know, everyone had has their own roughness in the college, you know what I mean? But it was what it was, it made me who I am today, you know? Can I let, you get a, a little more in depth about it? Uh, well, I left home when I was 13 because it was pretty violent. You know, I grew up in a pretty violent home. A lot of drugs, a lot of stuff children shouldn't be around, right? Uh, I left when I was 13 and got my own ever since. Traveling around here and there, everywhere. At uh, what age did you come make it to Vancouver? My first trip, I was 18 when I came here my first time. Yeah. And, and what brought you to the city? Uh, just all the talk about the city, you know, the big city. You go see the city, you go see Vancouver. I got here and, yeah, you know, it was flashy, bright, and all that jazz, you know what I mean? But it wasn't nothing big, I guess. Not that I thought, but I had to come check it out. I stayed for maybe two years at that time, and then I left. I did some more traveling in other places and came back here again when I was 28. And been here ever since. So how would you would you describe Vancouver at, at that time? At that time? It was hopping. It was alive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was, it was a lot different than it is today. You know, like the people were different, things were different. So like I said, it was alive. It was, and then people were with each other, not against each other, you know what I mean? Less violence, a lot less fighting. <laughs> you know, now it's just, everyone's all about me, 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 and they're worried about the other person that they steal from them, or they're gonna stab them or something, or anything. So it's violence now, like, you know, mistrust. You know, I, I don't know what happened. Someone's along the line, we lost it. <laughs> and what led you to start Abusing drugs? Uh, I'd probably say my childhood. You know, like when I left home, I was 13. You know, when a 13 year old hits the streets, man, not really much to do but drugs, you know what I'm saying? What drug did you start with? When uh, you were smoking pot. You know, you're doing the usual smoking pot and stuff, and by the age of 16 is when I did my first out of heroin. How was that? Uh, well, I won't lie, it was quite the rocket ride, that's for sure. <laughs> it definitely sucked me in and had to be good because here I am still. I don't shoot anymore, thank God. I got off the needles, but once you get hooked to an opium, you're hooked, right? It's very hard to get off. Very hard. Can you describe the opioid crisis in um, Vancouver? Well, I wouldn't say it's really a crisis, but it is a crisis, you know what I mean? It's one of those things that we've kind of done it to ourselves. But we haven't, you know, like, yeah, we, we, we're the ones using, you know, people using them, but our government ain't no better, you know what I mean, because they use it against us, you know what I mean, they use it against us to do things, to make us do this, make us do that, so that's, that's no better than what we're doing, you know what I mean, like, it's definitely no better, that's how I have to describe that, because neither one of us are doing the right thing, you know what I mean, mostly opiates, these, these opiates, like fentanyl, it's made for, like, medical reasons, not made to be out here on the street doing what we're doing with it. But here we are. When do you think the fentanyl problem became an actual problem here? I would say probably around the end of last year. Yeah. That's when they got introduced into took over the down. Like you're not doing you're not doing really heroin anymore. Like you don't have here really heroin anymore. It's fentanyl. You know what I mean? It's not heroin. You're hard pressed to find heroin, bro. Put it that way. It's all thin and all. They just call it down. They ain't heroin no more, brother. No. And then everyone's hooked on it. You know what I mean? They, they, they got everyone hooked on it. And coming off fentanyl, let me tell you something right now. Coming off heroin is hard. Coming off fentanyl, I'm gonna kill you. Like it's hard, man. Very fucking hard. I've watched people die because Talk to the system. Oh yeah, man. Heroin, real heroin, you could, you could quit cold turkey. It would, yeah, it would give you a talk to your system, you know, and you might, you might, you might go down a little bit, right, and everything. But 
depends on man, you try to quit a cold turkey man, you're, you're done. You can't do it. It's, that's, a big, that's how big of a shock it is to your system. Because your body depends on it now. All your organs depend on it. You know what I mean? Like, that's why it's so different than heroin. Heroin is just, just heroin, right? It doesn't, it doesn't take over your whole body. With that fentanyl, it's all through your body, in your organs, in your, like, your respiratory system, everywhere. It takes it over. They say that after you start, you got, if you start using fentanyl, the way we use it, after about seven years, you're probably going to be dead. Because it turns your inside into a rock. And inside out, you're going to dry out. Another thing our government doesn't tell us. Can you describe these tastings for people that aren't familiar with it? Today? Today and before when you first came. It's still, it's still my home. Where I've been. It's a beautiful place. There's beautiful people here. You know what I mean? Like, you can't forget that at the end of the day. You know, like, there's a lot of history here. You know, and that's what you gotta look at. You can't look at, you know, the, violence or the like, drugs and stuff, you look past that, you know what I mean, like look at the people, look at the people that have come from here, and what they've done, you know what I mean, like there's a lot of historical people that have come from here, that we forget about, you know, like, for example here we got graffiti done by Smokey Devil, He's telling our story down down here, you know what I mean, this is how he does it, and he gets through it, he's known around the world, because of this now, you know what I mean, and that's wicked, it's awesome. You know, that's how you got, got our story out there. They're telling people what it's like down here. It's not what everyone thinks. Yeah, that's a good road, but it's not the end of the road. You don't have to go to the end. You know, you can always turn around and go back home. You know what I mean? But it's still a beautiful place, man. There's beautiful sights. There's still beautiful buildings. There's beautiful people here, right? Like, you, like I said, you gotta look past that junk. And you can do it very easily, done. What's some of the craziest things you've seen down here? Oh, I don't even know where to begin with that one, but I got, I've seen a lot of, a lot of messed up shit. <laughs> like what? Like a lot of stuff. I, I was dumpster diving with a buddy of mine one time, and we found a foot in a bag. Yep. Took me a little deeper, found some fingers. Found out later on the whole body was in there. Yeah, bro. A month after that, there was a body parts found all the way through the alley underneath dumpsters. I'm sure you'll kill going around chopping up fools, man. Did you hear about that on the news, did you? No. They hide all that shit. They keep it all hush up. I don't know why, right? Like, people need to know that shit, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if I wasn't here, I'd want to know that. So I can tell my children not to go there or be careful when you go there and whatnot, right? Like, your friends or whatever, right? Like, People need to be aware of what's going on. If it's not, then they got no clue. Oh, it cut through here. They don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's some spots here in the city that I recommend people don't go after dark. Because it's some rough neighborhood. But you know, they've had to turn themselves that way. You know, they've been forced to be that way. You know, it's not, it's their fault, but it's not their fault. You know what I mean? I mean it's kind of a double-edged sword. You know? We gotta survive. And really, really, this is the only way we got to try. You know, like there, there are other options. Like if I'm wrong, there is. But a lot of them other options, they, they don't work all the time, man. You know, they just don't. They fail a lot. You know, a lot of people you go get help from. There's tons of places around. Like don't get me wrong, Carnegie Hall and all these other places are beautiful people. They got big hearts. They're here to help. But not all of them are. You know what I mean? A lot of them are here for this. It's for the money, bro. You know, that's just sad. You know, and a lot of people, they get they get turned down, they get shut out, and it angers them. That's when they turn into the drugs even harder. They turn into the bad, bad side even more. And then you lose them. And once they're gone, they're gone. What do you think can be done to help people down here? Awareness. Like, come down and know, get to know the people. Don't just go by what people say, like, Four years ago, our good old president of the Vancouver here told us that junkies and homeless people couldn't coexist with regular people. 
I proved you wrong. I've lived right here in this spot for four years. I work for every company along this fucking block. I get along with everybody in this block, you mean like anybody. He came to I'll tell you who I am. So I proved you wrong. I mean, we were no different than anybody else. They were trying to separate us. You know what I mean? That's wrong. You can't do that. You're gonna turn us against each other. That's not right. You know what I mean? That, that's what causes wars. That's what causes you know, civil wars. We don't need that shit. If anything, right now we need to be together, not apart. You know, there's too many people in higher up positions that would rather see people like me and my friends are squashed under the sun. Because then they have a scapegoat. They got someone they can blame for everything going wrong. And that's what they do now, they blame us. It ain't us. <laughs> I'm quite sure we all know that. And what do you think about the police getting rid of the tents? The tents, I agree, something needs to be done to that, yes. There's way too many on the block there. You can't even walk. Like, that's too much, guys. Way too much. You know, and, you know, yeah, it's a fire hazard. You're darn ready to do it. And I agree with them on that. But they're going about it the wrong way again. You know, they're trying to use force. And I can understand, I can understand a little bit from their view. You know, they're frustrated. They've been doing this a long time. And some of them just had enough, right? Well, I'm sorry, but you guys are the ones that signed up for this job. You know, it's your job to keep your cool. Keep your calm. Keep us calm. You know, and that's their job, man. Not shove a poor girl halfway across the street like you did, which is what you did last time. You know, like that's not helping anything, man. You know, they, I know it's a problem, I and mean, I agree. Like I said, I agree with them. Something needs to be done because it's just too congested. You know, any problems stem from that big time, always, right? So yeah, they do need to be spread apart a little more. You know, and to solve that problem is. All these promises that they're making about this and that, and housing and all this stuff, they need to stick through to the end with them. Not just tell us a bunch of crap in our ear and laugh about it over here. And that's all they're doing. You know, like they're not they're not following through with all their with what they're wanting with what they're saying. You know, like the Tent City, when it's over in Crab Park right now. I ran with that group for the first three or four Tent Cities. And they were good, they were good, but then we found out a little inside tip that one of the officials that was supposed to be helping us was only there for the money and the promotion and fame. So that kind of made me lose faith in all of them. You know, like we didn't anybody. And a lot of us got frustrated and said, well, get out with you. We're going to do what we want then. You guys don't care. You're just here for money and fame and get a fucking promotion to go to Mexico. Ooh, yay. <laughs> what about us that are still sitting here in the ditches, right? You know? A lot of us are here for the right reason. Sure, some of us aren't. And there is, there's a lot that are just, they don't care, they're riffraff, they don't do shit. They're happy where they are. Well, there's a lot of us that aren't. You know, we want to get back inside, we want to get a job, we want to get back in society, we want to, you know, get back in life. But, it just seems like they don't want, they don't want to give people that chance. They, they want to pick and choose to get that chance. That's not how life works. You know, that's not the way it's supposed to be. You know, everyone here has the right to do and be what they want to be. And if anyone out there could help you, what would you want? Me? Yeah. I'd want you to come down and check it out. Come down and talk to the people. You know, you know, don't just listen to what you hear on the news. The way you read in the paper. Come down and see for yourself. Yeah. Like I've been, like I said, I've been here in the same spot for four years because I'm kind of like a home base for a lot of people. They let people come here and they go to sleep because they know they're safe because I watch them. I feed them. I clothe them. You know, I do all that. You know, because it's, it's rough out here at night. Especially if you're by yourself, you're going to get robbed. It works. So I started running this. It's like a little chocolate, I guess you can call it. Even though they can come here, they've been up for four days walking around because they're tired, too scared to go to sleep. You know, they can lay down and go to sleep, and the stuff's going to be here when they wake up. They're going to be here. You know what I mean? Like, that shouldn't be that way. But it is, right? That's what it's turned into. People get desperate. Can't really blame them. You know, that's the time, that's the method. 
I appreciate your time. I appreciate Thank you, you very much. Yeah, man.